No, the title of the video isn't a joke. This is 100% what it says. Let's take it from the top. Three, two, one. Hello there, viewers. I'm the Knight of Arcane. And guess what? This was originally planned as an April Fool's video. The joke being that this video title is so absurd, no one would believe I really did this. Who's laughing now? Well, probably me since they came out really good. But yeah, today I turned My Little Pony characters into stands. The main reason why, besides as a joke, I've been watching some of Izzy Wee's, I do not know how to pronounce their name, sorry in advance, but some of her videos, it was after finding their Sims lore video, and curiosity led me to check out the MLP videos. So here we are, with four ponies as stands. Well then, let's actually see how they look, shall we? Okay, well, I guess this is my newest report, though, I also guess I was a little indecisive about making this report. Two of the users I've found are only in high school. None of them are a fret, but I guess I need to make my report anyway. Though, I guess you already know of one of these four, don't you? So, this first user I noticed was on my way to work. I recognized her easily. Rebecca Twilight. She's one of my sister's classmates. And from what she's told me, Rebecca is one of the smartest students at her school. Though she tends to be a bit a social. She was sitting at a cafe and I didn't think much about it when I spotted her, looking, at, looking intently at her cup, until I saw a purple and pink horn figure behind her. I easily figure out it's a stand and summon state of my head, with the intent to rush over and protect her from this stand as its horn starts to glow. But then, I see the cup start to glow the same color and lift up in the air. I stop and stay behind a bush and watch as the cup goes up and is then put back down. Rebecca then panting a bit, seemingly tired. She then pulls out a notebook and I hear her mention how she's still working to improve the telekinesis power of Little Miss Magic, though she believes she has it down the best. I watch as she summons Little Miss Magic again, and starts lifting both the cup and saucer this time. However, a loud car horn causes both of us to jump in surprise, and Rebecca seemed to be so startled that she sent a blast from her stand's horn that made a hole right through a nearby tree. It wasn't super big or noticeable if you didn't see it happen, but Rebecca looked around, didn't see me, and saw no one else noticed, and so let out a sigh. An alarm on her phone went off, and she looked at it. Her eyes going wide as she then mentions how she's late. Rebecca picked up a piece of toast she had, put it in her mouth, and ran off. I, however, noticed that her cup and saucer are still floating in the air, slowly, at the same speed she had it at earlier, but it didn't seem to stop when she got distracted. Though, I guess I was also distracted, since then I heard a voice next to me. Wow, that's 
understand. Sure is crazy, huh? I jump back and look to see a lady about my age still looking up to where the cup was floating away. It seems Little Miss Magic is also able to shoot small blasts from the horn on her head alongside telekinesis and the other spells she has, though it seems she needs a line of sight to stop them, even after unsummoning her stand. I was surprised a bit about how open she was with the information at the time, though later found out why. As the cup left our sight, she turned to look at me with a smirk. Jacob the Kemi, right? I got a little defensive until she put out her hand. Ashley Dash. Though my friends, co-workers, and the guy who calls out my orders calls me Dodger. And you can call me that since, guess what? We're co-workers. That and the half hug she gave me near the end surprised me. As she explained, she also works for the Foundation. Though you know all of this, she's been apparently reassigned here because of the stand activity I've already mentioned going on. With her apparently being a great investigator on stand activity. Dodger seemed to then get distracted and asked if we could have a standoff, and before I got a chance to say yes or no, she summons her stand, she's a rainbow, and I barely get a chance to block with state of my head as she rushes incredibly fast at me. Obviously, you know what she's a rainbow looks like, having light blue skin and rainbow colored hair and tail, similar to Dodger's own hair design, and it's incredibly fast. So fast, I couldn't even redirect any stored up energy when she connected a punch again, and it seems to be able to accelerate from 0 to 100 in a snap, heck faster than a snap. Not only that, but wherever the stand accelerates from and then stops, a shockwave is sent out from the location, followed by a sonic boom-like sound, both which can knock and disorient the people. However, she seems to only be able to go in a straight line at her fastest speeds, and I quickly figured out how to time her attacks and land a single punch in the stand's gut, though I still got knocked back a little by the sonic boom shockwave but she technically went down too. I slowly got up from the fight, while she leapt up in excitement, saying I was just as strong as she heard, making me blush, I assume, though I was then taken aback a little by what she said next, though I think she meant it as a joke. Want to spy on some schoolgirls with me? An unfunny joke at that. Her wording aside, Dodger wanted to tail Rebecca some more, believing some more students at her school might have stands. While Curious if there were some more, I was also worried if there were more stand users at the school. My sister could get caught up in this stand mess, something I've been trying to keep her out of with the best of my ability. So, after she explains it in a normal way, I agree to go and check to make sure there's no threats to the staff and students at the school before heading over. We chat a bit, learning she got she's a rainbow more naturally than from any arrow, and how she likes fast cars and racing, 
along with wondering if she'd be able to face Asher and his bad motor scooter. When I asked how she joined the Foundation, she shrugged and avoided the question. Though, I guess you already know her story. Anyways, we make it to the school and see hardly anyone is there. I then remember that school starts later today since it's Thursday. Dodger then questions why Rebecca seemed to be in a rush while heading towards the school. I assumed for some extracurricular activity before classes, which for some reason Dodger doesn't believe, especially since she then notices Rebecca walking out around back in her gym uniform. We follow with Dodger in the lead, hiding in the bushes and trees the best we can, as we watch her walk up to another student. Though I was blanking on the name at the time, later I was able to look up through yearbooks her name, Adrienne Diel. She seemed to scold Rebecca for a bit, before they started to joke as we got closer. Adrienne asked if she was ready for the training, and Rebecca seemed ready, summoning Little Miss Magic to our surprise. Even more to our surprise was when Adrian followed suit, summoning a tall mirror-faced figure that made me think of a chess piece that I heard her call Chasing the Sun. Parts of her body and arms started to twist around, making me notice the mirror-like sections on them as light bounced off them before they got faster and the beams of light actually started to fire off from the mirrors at different angles. We had to duck out of the way a bit as some almost hit us in our cover and watched as Rebecca had to flip and dodge the beams, though not entirely gracefully as a few beams lightly singed her. She then seemed to concentrate and fired a blast from Little Miss Magic's horn at chasing the sun who then had one of the mirrors stop right where the blast was going to connect and reflected it into another mirror on her arm before reflecting it again into her face and sending the blast back at Rebecca who had to dodge it and the other light beam still around her. I then noticed that some of Chasing the Sun's light beams were reflecting off windows and other reflective surfaces, making it still pretty hard for Rebecca to dodge, and she was soon knocked back. Before I could point it out, Dodger pulled me down, having noticed something. Someone's coming, I think a teacher. Quick reminder that we have a Patreon set up. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. As a patron, you get access to weekly polls, early access to content, and monthly art rewards starting with character headshots. Along with that, the more patrons we have, the closer we get to our Patreon video goals. So become a patron today. Lowest tier starts at $3 a month. Every little bit helps. But with that, we are on to our last pony stand. Rebecca and Adrian would have nothing to worry about, since the teacher probably wouldn't see their stands. Me and Dodger, on the other hand, especially if they saw us watching two students and all. Quick, I have an idea. I was impressed she came up with an idea so quickly. Before she then pulled me close and kissed me. That was, uh, surprising to say the least. Though it was, uh, um, pretty nice too. Don't get me wrong, but that's, uh, off topic. Dodger gently pushed me down to the ground and started to straddle me. And I quickly figured out her plan was to make it look like two young adults just making out. Though in my head, I still had doubts on it. I hear some brush being pulled aside, and then hear someone clear their throat. 
we look up, and I recognize the person instantly. Vice Principal Tabitha Callisto. I sweat a little, as Dodger apologizes, saying we needed to blow off some steam, and the school was nearby, and honestly, even if it was another teacher, I doubt they'd buy that. However, while Dodger lied her butt off, I noticed a mist started to surround us, before darker clouds started to appear also. I followed the direction they were coming from, and saw behind Tabitha a figure, one that looked a lot like a centaur, but with wings where the arms would be and saw as mist and clouds came from the moon-shaped openings on their body. With one faint whisper, I heard Tabitha say two words. Beautiful Nightmare. Soon, she's a rainbow was summoned, and Dodger had us moved away, as the clouds and mist then sparked with lightning charging through them. It would have electrocuted us, if we didn't move in time. As we got up, I saw the lightning seem to have come from her eyes and horn originally, before it then used its wings to fly above Tabitha, making an imposing sight. The clouds and mist kept moving towards us pretty quickly, with the sparks of lightning already jolting out already. I looked to Dodger, who nodded at me, silently agreeing we needed to fight our way out. We summoned our stands and got ready as the best we could, when a voice to the side told Tabitha to stop. We all turned to see Rebecca and Adrian looking at us, but between them stood Principal Nicole Callista, Tabitha's older sister. She listened, but kept Beautiful Nightmare ready, as she then went to tell Nicole she found us spying on their students during their practice. But then Nicole told her it was quite alright, and she already knew we were here. Me and Dodger were surprised before Nicole turned to us, explaining a few of her students happened to have stands and that she and Tabitha are working on teaching and training these users to use their stands responsibly. I think she does know we report to someone and asks that if we do report this in to tell them the school and its users aren't a threat to let them train in peace. Though said if we needed proof me and Dodger could be allowed to come back to see for ourselves, but only us. Only then did Tabitha unsummon Beautiful Nightmare and followed Nicole and the students inside, though not without giving us a warning glare. After that, we walked off together. Heading to my job since I still had a shift to be in for. During the walk, Dodger apologized for the kiss, and I asked her to warn me next time. Though then I corrected myself. I assumed I blushed red during that, so she was blushing red as I said that. Anyways, we agreed. We are partners, and later brought her to meet the Hungry Hanias and Shard, though she did then start a fight with Asher. I believe the Callisto sisters aren't bad stand users, and don't think we have to worry about their students, but I understand if I need to keep an eye on them, and believe Dodger has the same feelings as me. On this, nothing else. I uh, guess this is Jacob Takemi signing off. And 
that, dear viewers, was our very late April Fool's MLP Ponies as Stands video. While obviously done as a joke, it was fun to draw these four as stands. And if you want to see more ponies as stands for whatever reason you may have, let me know in the comments along with anything else you want to curse me and the viewers with turning MLP ponies into. <laughs> and if you want to cleanse yourself after this, you can check out my other stand videos, or my Hell of a Boss characters as Mandalorian video, or any other video that might catch your fancy. If you did actually like what you saw, please do leave a like, and subscribe to join our little arcane town as we continue to grow and to see more videos like this in the future. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Later!